Hey, what is that? Can you even see me in there? What do you think it is? 35 mil. Everything you need to know why it's cosmic, and then a shit just came in of from stuff. UPS from the ups people. And earlier we were trying to do this failure to launch. We screwed up some stuff. Not a big deal. Exit out. Forget about it. Yeah, but here we are. 35 mil, and why it's chill. Yum 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 yum. yum. Choo choo. I like tacos. Hey, right, let's go to work. Chop chop. Good hobby. Yeah, well, here we are. Here we are. Hopefully, McSalsa will get a 405 and then be all cool about it. Yeah. Report back, McSalsa, if you watch this later on your progress with your squads. Mm -hmm. All right. So, we're, it's Try It Tuesday. And where we're going to show you. Yeah, we're going to show you film photography. We're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss it. We have a shipment of a camera that just came in. We can't always try every hobby, but here we are. We're going to do this. So, it's a little different cadence today and 35 millimeter. It, you, not like we can show you how to do it, but we're going to talk about it and why it's dope. And it's it's a cool process. I, I, you know, to pontificate a little bit on it in the beginning. My son and I, we have talked many times about this and why it's so authentic, why it's so natural, why it's cool, and at the same time, why you really should probably give it a shot and then maybe not always think about, you know, yeah, hey, what's up? Hey, Hackerman, 500 And why 35 millimeter? You probably really should give it a, a, a hard look if you, if you like photography. Uh, and, you know, that way you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, so let's get into it. Before we open the box, show off your first 35 yeah, so millimeter this camera. This was my first 35 millimeter camera. I shot three rolls of film on this thing, and I haven't got all of them developed, but I, I do have a sense of. Um, I, I I don't speak. That, is that German? No, I don't, I don't know what that is, but. It is. But, yeah. Um, we're, we're gonna give this. Yeah, you're, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, tell them a little bit about your first 35 mil. It is a Vivitar 22 SL, and it is a SLR camera. SLR stands for Single Lens Reflex, uh, which I don't know exactly what that means. But you know, we have a lot to say about ISO and shutter speed, which is basically essentially all you need to know. If you have an auto exposure camera, then you should be all set. But if you have a fully manual camera, there's a exposure meter right here and you should have a light meter on the inside that's what you saw at the, in the beginning that plus and minus that's that's your light meter and if your camera is on it will detect the uh, amount of exposure coming in and it'll, as you adjust it, it, it as long as it's pretty much in the middle you should be good cool so what is film photography that is a good question because film photography, also known as analog photography, refers to the process of capturing images using a traditional film camera and photographic film. It involves using a light sensitive film coated with silver halide crystals, which react to light and create a latent image. This latent image is then developed and processed using chemical techniques to produce a visual program. Here are some key aspects of film photography, which the first thing is the camera because film cameras come in various sizes, including 35mm, medium format, and large format cameras. Each type has its own characteristics and uses different sizes of films. Uh, and so that brings us to film types. Film types, or film, are available in different formats and sensitives, known as ISO, which is important, or film speed. Most common formats include 35mm, which is 112 through 120 to 220 is that the it's like whoa, is whoa, that a whoa. dual okay, format okay, okay, or okay, what okay. is that the most common is is uh 35 millimeter but then there's 120 through 122 which is medium format okay and then there's four by five which i assume is four by five inches which is large format okay IS and iso determines uh the film sensitivity to light and the higher iso the more sensitive and more sensitive the light is and for the film and that means it might be a little more grainy 
Oh, that's so good. To, that's good to know. It, yeah, that is very good to know. Because if you're if you're trying to get started in it, you're going to start seeing some of these numbers. You know, the ISO, like you talked about. Today, we're not going to really maybe get into. We might actually have we're time gonna, to get in. We're well, going to get into the uh, mostly the chemical process and what makes it so authentic. Why you should consider this. Right. So today, we're we're kind of advocating. Hey, it's Try Tuesday. You need a hobby. You don't know what to do. You're just like, man, well, I'm a good hobbyist at a lot of different things, like we always talk about. And I want to learn, you know, more about it. And I kind of grew up around this stuff, but even though I didn't, I didn't really use it because I wasn't into photography. And of course, my son is 14 years old. And you think he would be like, oh, this is boring. Why don't I just use a digital camera? Well, it ain't, it ain't the it's same. It's not the same. We're going to um, get into We're going to get in why your iPhone or your $2,000 digital SLR may not be as cool as you think it is when we get down to the brass tacks a little bit of it. Now, real quick, yesterday, before you get going, uh, yesterday I was working on the Tamiya CCO2 build and we wanted to kind of continue it because yesterday I, I lost my axles. Yeah. And I... I was so happy when I found them. I was like, man, look, now I get to put the axles on. Then I kind of got a little carried away, and then I connected both sides, you know, with the four links. So for those of you who've been following along a little bit on that on the on the RC car build that we're going to be doing this particular model, um, I'm hoping to kind of progress through as he's kind of you know talking to you about photography and at the same time don't forget if you've got a build you got a question you need a tech tip or whatever we're here and if you're new to the stream it's cosmic toys and hobbies is our little retail slash toy store we do a bunch of repairs this is a repair desk people come by all the time i say hi or whatever so just know that sometimes the stream may kind of meander a little bit but We'll hopefully have some cool jams for you. Set the mood, kick back and relax, grab your favorite cup of tea or your favorite ghost energy drink. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be here, you know, for a couple hours. So getting into a little bit more about this. Well, okay. Um, when shooting film, getting the exposure right is crucial since you can't instantly review it. Um, so I can, I can see that. You need to consider factors like aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to achieve the desired exposure. And after capturing the images the film need to, needs to be developed, this process uh, involves chemical treatments to convert the latent image into a visible one. Oh. This can be done in a dark room or by sending it to a professional lab. Hmm. Footnote. Hold that thought for later because we have an update here about film processing i think we'll talk um, about it just a little bit do we want to show what? uh show the camp that just arrived you want to get into the new camera that just yeah arrived? So, so i i can uh, i can just show them all the features i know a lot about this camera well he's gonna he's gonna get the box ready i want to ad lib a t tiny bit here so real quick the it talks a little bit about in the beginning we talked a little bit about like oh hey you know there's some film development and there's you know iso this and you're like okay what does all this mean well if you were thinking about doing 35 millimeter and you're like okay what do i need to do there are some footnotes you need to know because it like he said it's not an instantaneous sort of gratification it's very not really manual in the process is a because there is some auto features on some of the cameras but there's a manual component to it where you kind of just need to know like hey how much light am i going to have for this film and, just, it, and if it's too sensitive like i said earlier it can make it grainy right really think of the camera as your third eye because in, in this eye is detached from you it has it, its own experiences in life so you have to adjust to it and each camera will probably, kind of like a music instrument, will be, you have to kind of tune it to that yeah. day, that environment, that light, It is that every, temperature. Every, it is every moment. You are capturing the moment. It is not digital. It does not do it for you. And really digital, digital 
He's gonna get on the bandwagon here. D digital, digital just has image sensors that capture light well, and converts it into binary. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that and why digital is not real. It's not. This is not. This like right now. Are we this real? is not. Are, are this we is real? Not real. So, all right. So, the reason why we're doing Try Tuesday again for photography is because we were hoping that this pack package would would arrive essentially. Go ahead and unbox it, bud. Yeah. It's pretty dope. I mean, it it, is. this is about the... You are going to get excited with us. I, I don't know. I hope. I, you know, you never know. Somebody might be like, hey, man, I, I don't know if I like this or not. Well, we're going to tell them what the camera is. So, if you had noticed, this came from eBay. And you, you never know sometimes what what is on eBay, so you have to just sort of be careful. Do some homework and some research before you go buy any 35 mil camera. It's not just... They're not all the same. eBay safe. Yeah, you gotta cut off. There you go. All right, cool. It was packaged well, to Thanks to whoever did that. Yeah, whoever we ordered this from. Whoever we ordered this from, thank you. We don't need that. It looks like maybe Okay, yeah. And, yeah, okay. Just pull that whole thing out and I'll see if there's anything else. That's the same. So and it looks like they shoved everything in that brown. In this little coat that so, you Okay. Hey, where's the thing? Let me see the thanks. It says thanks. Yeah. Thanks, your order made my day. I hope this package makes yours. Aw. This thing's dusty, I wonder. When we sell stuff on eBay, I give them a coupon to our website because I'm yeah. like, we think you're cosmic, so why not buy something cosmic for yourself? All right, so I love the little button, man. Check, look, no, you got to show them. Hold on. Okay, okay. Have y'all ever seen this before? You're like sitting here going, why, why does that have a lock on it? And it's like a little keyhole. It's a little tiny thing. Look at that. I think it's kind of funny. All right, so... Show us the camera. Yeah. Oh, it's more packing. No. <laughs> Alright, so there's something here. That is a lens, I gotta say. Put everything down. Okay. We'll just kind of open it up here a little bit. And then, oh, that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Sort of just hold it. What? It's like ah. a different compartment. It is. It has some old instructions. Came with a roll of film. Wonder, I wonder if it's already been used. Okay, I'm gonna move this. So, uh, where's that knife? Right here. Oh. Okay, so first, I'm I'm just gonna do the lens. I'm gonna show you the lens. Uh, we're gonna save the best for last. How about that? Okay. The best, huh? It is the best. Simply the best. I gotta say, this this is the best. Better than all the, the best rest. starter camera because it has auto exposure. And that's why I love it so much. So look at this. Look how beautiful it is. So why is that beautiful? <laughs> it, uh... It's my opinion. See, I don't know why... You, you can comment on why it's beautiful. Well... I'm not sure exactly why, but... It's kind of neat. I mean... It has a bunch of numbers on here. You know, I don't know what any of that stuff do. does. Yeah, so that's the exposure meter. Exposure and meter and focus. what else? Oh, okay. So you got to kind of have to know how to do some of this stuff. All right, so we'll set that here. And then then, so this is really what's going to help me. The type of photography, I'm, the genre, I would say, is uh, action. And I'm doing photography for skaters. 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 Skating. Skating. We have something else to show y'all here in a minute. Oh. Here, why don't I help you? Yeah, please. Because he's like Magilla Gorilla when it comes to certain things. He, he's like, came in like a... Uh, oh, this is... Okay. He, he came in like a wrecking ball. This you is know. A color film, so I only do black and white. I won't be able to process this. This has already been taken, I think. I don't... I'm not going to worry about it. You think you think that's just a used roll of film? Yeah, and it's color film. I don't do color film. Ooh. Who do you think I am? I'm all I'm I'm like Batman. 
That doesn't sound right. <laughs> Ugh, so much packing. I they have to keep they have to keep it protect. Well, this is like one of the reasons why we got this camera, because <laughs> the freaking lens on look at this thing. Okay. I don't even know. Yeah. Okay. I go, yeah, I guess it kind of goes like that. Alright. All right. My zoom lens. Oh. Say hello to my little zoom lens. It, uh... Our big zoom lens. It has a macro lens attached. Is that normal? Wait. You think that's two, two in one? It's just a big extension. I... <laughs> we're we're we'll, gonna have to try it on the camera. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right. So why is this camera dope? It um is the Canon AE1. We'll show it kind of. Uh yeah. You know, where they can read it. But yeah, put that dude on there. Okay. So is there hey. anything you want to say? So the AE1, I, the reason why we chose this one is because he needed something sort of standardized, and he needed something that, um, what's the term? Well, it's you got it here. Uh, the term is is he needed to future proof himself, which may sound like an oxymoron because yeah, this is an know. old piece of equipment. But it makes sense when you think about standardization of sizes, right? right. Um, he needed something that I'm push down, down or down or up. No. Well. Down. Hold on, there's like a little lock thing. Oh yeah, that's... Is that, is that why it is? That, I don't know. I can't tell. Or maybe it unscrews. No, I can't. Alright. Okay. It's a little stuck. It, it could have been, you know, maybe because transit or something, it kind of got a little sticky. We'll figure it out here in a second. Um, so, but because I'm, I'm not going to force it. However, yeah, this is... So, let me, let me finish the thought. The reason why we... He needed a camera that, that had like a standard lens size or a more common lens size and then since canon was like it's probably one of the most or the most popular 35 mil ever made it is uh that he's like okay well this makes sense it would be helpful right so that's something you need to think about if you're trying to get into this because like his first camera he got based on a budget and it's hard to find lenses in that size for the other camera he had so that's part part of the process or the methodology of I why we did what we need did. Need to look how to put on this lens because I've never worked a lens. So we'll we'll a lens that way we won't will like this. My Vivitar. Oh, I see. It's kind of like a. Oh yeah, I can see. All right. So real quick, let's before we go any more into this, let's keep going on why it's cool and what makes it different. Yeah, that's honestly the most important part about this. Yeah, I mean we could keep showing off his cool camera, but. You know. We can give some history on the AE-1, too. Uh, well, let's, let's, so what is the... A Canon AE-1? Do you want to do that next? Yeah, I'll, okay. no, I'll just do it really quick. Um, so, yeah, the Canon AE-1 is legendary, legendary, 35mm film SLR, which stands for Single Lens Reflex. Uh, and it's an SLR camera that was introduced by Canon in 1976. It quickly became popular and is considered one of the most influential cameras in the history of photography. The Year of the Dragon. Huh? I was telling them I was born that year. I'm old. Oh. 76, man. You were born the year that... 17... I mean, not 19... I don't know. Okay. The Canon A1 was notable for its innovative features and accessibility, making it appealing to both amateur and advanced photographers. Photographers? Yeah. Here are some of the key features. Design and build. The Canon A1 has a classic all-metal body design with solid build quality. It is clean. Uh, it, it is clean and it has a clean ergonomic layout with innovative controls and a tough, comfortable grip. It's basically just easy to use, I guess is yeah. what you would say, right? It has manual exposure control. In addition to the shutter priority mode, the AE-1 offers full manual exposure control. Photographers can set both the shutter speed and aperture independently to achieve their desired exposure. 
Um, it has an FD lens mount, the Canon AE-1 uses a, the Canon FD lens mount, which is compatible with a wide range of high quality lenses. This allows photographers to utilize various focal lengths. Kind of like what we were talking about. Creative options, yeah. yeah. It has a bright and informative viewfinder, apparently. Um, has it's okay. What? Oh yeah, the, yeah. The stuff just showed up. Oh yeah, the CEO just arrived. She's like, oh, well, we have a bunch of stuff that came in. Um, I should probably okay. Viewfinder and focusing. The Canon A1 features a bright and informative viewfinder with a split image rangefinder and a micro prism focusing. Uh, these aids help to achieve accurate manual focusing. Uh, and it has a hot shoe for attaching external flash, uh, an external flash unit. It also supports flash sync at various shutter speeds. With some, some of this stuff about it is new to me. I honestly don't know. <laughs> about that's, some of this well that's part of try tuesday is discovering new things kind of like last week when we talked about van gogh and the starry night oh filters yeah be careful those are about to fall out yeah, yeah. okay so real quick he's got some filters one important one here is the yellow one it's kind of hard to see because the shadows and stuff uh however um you know one of those things that you could maybe talk about is why that one is so important because you could be doing black and white yeah so um, and the, there's something about the black and white photography, especially at night, that the yellow filter is helpful with. And then again, I'm doing my little build right here in case you fear. Right. Okay, so I mean, yellow, the yellow filter, a yeah. yellow le lens filter, uh, darkens the sky and it makes um, blue tones. Things that would be blue appear darker in black and white photography. This effect can make a more dramatic, moody skies, emphasizing, emphasizing cloud formations and adding depth to the image, which is important. Haze and fog reduction. Yellow filters help cut through atmosphere haze and reduce the impact of foggy conditions. Absorbing blue light, these filters improve the clarity and visibility of distant subjects, making them appear more sharply defined, which is good for zoom. Yeah, and then the yellow filter. I learned something about using a yellow filter from astronomy because okay. at night um, you have a lot of yellow light coming from the earth if you're near an urban area because of like street lights, cars and stuff like that driving around and it's just like, eh, not cool. Um, so at night when you're shooting black and white that's also going to be helpful but I didn't know about those others. Those are kind of neat too. I guess it kind of makes sense. It's hard to spend so much time on filters, but I feel like sometimes if you don't really know what's going on and you're like, well, why is that important? Well, maybe, maybe you needed to know. Yeah. Okay. Continue, senor. Um, yeah, I'm kind of looking at this. Well, they can't see what you're doing. Let's not try to put it on right now. Sorry. I'm literally going to take um, this away. You see what you got to do with your kids sometimes? Okay. You got to take their toys away. Listen, it's worth noting that this specific effect of yellow filter may vary depending on factors such as film type, lighting conditions, and the overall scene being captured. Different filters such as yellow light or deep yellow may offer varying degrees of color modification and contrast enhancement. While yellow filters are commonly used for black and white film photography, they also can be employed with digital photography and applying post-processing te techniques to simulate the effects of filter during image editing, which you don't, yeah, if you just have it all in the moment, you don't need that, but, you know, whatever. Um, it's important to consider the desired effect, whatever you're doing with the lens filter. So. A little bit on that so that that kind of speaks to a bigger volume of the 35 mil because you know like with digital cameras you just select a little app and you go oh, here's my filter and it, you, you can always tell it never looks right it never looks right and we're going to tell you why here in a little bit well here's the thing about film photography it has a distinct look and compared to digital photography different film stocks have unique characteristics in, including color redemption, uh, contracts, and brain structure. Um, 
which can contribute obviously to the overall aesthetic of the photograph. Gosh, can't read. But it's okay. You, you yeah. get, it has good aesthetics. Yeah, so it's it, talking about aesthetically, the human eye, I think, actually prefers 35 mil or analog photography. And really, analog, I feel like, I kind of, I feel like that term being archaic is just, it a little, sometimes it has a stigma on it. And, you know, there's a place for, for things to be digital. I, I get that. And, um, however, as you're going to keep seeing here, as we kind of keep talking about and unfolding why this is important, that's a good idea. So no dirt gets in there. Um, you know, there's going to be some things that you're like, Hey, if I want to be an artist and sometimes people are like, I would love to be creative, right? Well, I would yeah. love to be creative and go, Hey, you know, being creative is sometimes difficult, especially if you're stressed, you know, you have too many negative things, maybe kind of polluting or clogging the old noggin up. Maybe this is a good outlet for you to, to try something different. That's why we're sort of promoting it right now, really. Um, the, uh, and there's something to say about that. Film photography often requires a deeper understanding of the technical aspects. It does. It, 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 um, it need, you need to be a bit of an autodidact and just kind of dig in a little and bit. Since there's learn. cost associated with every frame, it encourages photographers to be more deliberate and thoughtful in their approach. That's, good. That's a good point. Despite the rise of digital photography, film photography remains popular among enthusiasts, artists, and professionals. It it offers a unique tangible experience along with a distinct aesthetic a aesthetic uh, aesthetic quality yeah that people obviously may find yeah. well and that goes back to it's real it's real and you're going to find out why we're going we keep saying that okay let's, and you're let's like, get into it yeah we we kind of keep talking about it and you're like well what what do you even mean by real like it's just real man when light enters the camera Think about it reaches this. the film in the camera. A chemical reaction occurs within the film. The film is coated with a layer of silver halite crystals, typically silver bromide or silver ionide. These crystals are sensitive to light. During exposure, the light interacts with the silver halide crystals in the film. The photons from the light excite the electrons within the crystals, causing them to separate from the silver ions. This process is known as photoionization or excitation. When the silver halite crystals are exposed to light, the photons with sufficient energy cause the halite ions, bromide or ionide, to release electrons. These electrons are attracted to the positively charged silver ions within the crystal lattice. lattice. So, we're gonna, I want to pause right there, you, so just remember where you're at. Yeah. This is very important because light is entering the camera of, say, like a bird, right? This beautiful bird just sitting there, and the sun is at a certain angle, and it's a certain time of the day, and you have a certain exposure film, and there's so much light coming into the camera. You keep we keep talking about photo and ions and light. Really, we're talking about photons. That's really what it is. A photon. So I said this earlier before the stream. You are capturing a cosmic ray not to be punny with our store name but you're you're gonna see a correlation here that you're capturing something in that camera at a moment in time via a photon from the sun and you you literally captured it just as if you took a telescope looked up at the moon that photon is bouncing off of the moon into your eye your eye is absorbing that so and it's translating that into your brain so you can see it and understand it, it it's a real process not like a digital process which we're going to go into a little bit later and why it's different um all right so okay yeah continue but the exposed silver halite crystals undergo a chemical change 
The uh, silver ions combine with the released electrons to form a neutral silver atom. These silver atoms then cluster together, forming small black or gray particles known as latent image specks, which makes it that makes it invisible at that point. So um, the film's not yet visible; it is a latent image. So um, your latent image, latent image needs to be developed to make things vid visible. The um, this is the development process. Uh, we take our developer and we immerse it immerse the film and the developer we're gonna kind of loosely go over this because this is like a whole other topic that right. we're actually going to talk about at a later date we immerse the film in the developer and then we uh it, that converts it into metallic silver this reaction amplifies the silver specks making it more visible and then after the development the film needs to be fixed to remove the remaining crystals that aren't really visible and then it's uh it goes in its stop bath and then it's done and then it's washed or dried resulting in a negative or positive image and it can be printed or scanned to produce a visible photograph so yeah in summary the chemical reaction that occurs in film photography involves the interaction of light with the silver halide crystals in the film leading to the formation of latent image specs that are then developed into metallic silver during the film development process neato mojito so what he's saying is, is there's a lot of steps involved. However, it's a science project in your camera, essentially. Yeah. Do you believe in science? So... Okay. Now, what else should we talk about, bud? I'm actually looking something up. Okay. Is something coming to your mind? Yeah. Okay. I like this. On the fly... Research. Can I ask what you're looking up? How to use a Canon FD mount, which is the mount for this camera. Well, but th we need to go in more of that because we we can do that later. Okay. You know what I mean? I know he's super excited. He I, wants I don't to know what do you want me to talk well, about. Well, what, what else did you research? Okay. Uh, anything about photography. I know, but what have we not gone over? Because We, we, need we to have over. not gone over uh, what's better, digital or film. Oof. This is a debate. Because, okay, listen. Listen, with digital cameras, it's immediate. This is where it gets interesting, I think. Digital cameras is immediate feedback. And it's cost effective effective on the long run yeah and it in post-processing about the flexibility because it's digital it is not real um but but with film listen with film it has aesthetic qualities and it has distinct look and feel lower and deliberate approach though shooting on film also requires more thoughtful consideration you have to be thoughtful with every film well it, i think it makes you better at it does pictures. it does because instead of doing selfies all the time and you're sitting there going oh look how good i look well no the beauty filter is making you look good where if you're just sitting there and you, you get like a 35 mil camera and you take a picture of yourself, you never look good because I remember people that used to try to do manual selfies. It was hilarious. Um, and you're just like, okay, I'm not doing that again because I, I wasted my time. It, it made people, uh, what is the term I'm looking for? Less um, impulsive. Less impulsive and also less about themselves. Because the subject matter is really, yeah, egotistical. I think digital photography has made has kind of changed people's egos a little bit. N not to get off into that diatribe too far, but listen, the better option depends on your personal fr preferences and yep. workflow, desired aesthetics, and specific goals you have as a photographer. So it's whether you prefer convenience or artistic, uh. Well, an artistic process yeah. of creativity and an outlet. Because, again, why is digital photography really not real? All right. We, we looked this up um, because I wanted to kind of... It's hard to explain, I think, but it's really not. 
No, it's not. Um, okay. So. When a, a digital com camera converts light into electronic sig signals, it's eventually, essentially, <laughs> translating the captured image data into binary data. So, the image sensor on a digital camera consists of millions of tiny photosensitive elements called pixels. Each pix pixel measures the light intensity of that light and falls on that forms onto it and converts it into electrical charge. So, um, when the light hits it, it has to be translated. It has. It, it's not into a one and a zero binary code. It is literally not instant. And and so therefore you have a computer in there, and it goes based on a program that a human wrote, right? Or maybe AI in the future. I don't know. However, again, both processes are translation in essence, but digitally. That means a computer's going, hey, I think you look like this. It's That's literally what's happening. So it's a translation, again, it's not like, it's still capturing a photon, but the photon's not really captured through a chemical process. It's more of a reaction and less of a, uh, a transform of energy. So, I mean, maybe? it's not it's not totally real. It takes electrical charge generated by each pixel and then it's then converted into a digital signal. At first, it's electrical. This conversion process involves analog to digital conversion, where the continuous electrical charge is then quantized to discrete digital values using the binary system. The analog system is sampled at regular intervals and is and the intensity values are represented by binary numbers, typically using a range of 8 to 16 bits per pixel. Um, once the analog si signals are digitized, they're processed within the camera's electrons. This processing may involve adjustments to color balance, exposure, noise reduction, and other image enhancements. That's the thing, it has so many in image enhancements, it's not totally there. It makes you kind of look like you know what you're doing and in reality if you had a a 35 mil or a film camera you would be you, i guess lost in translation yeah so it's, sorry it's converted to a di digital file and if it's more professional it might just be jpeg or just raw raw it's raw bruh so, in essence, the captured image is translated into a series of binary numbers that represent the pixel values and other revelant, rev, revelant, revelant. Where is it at? Where are you at? Relevant. Relevant. Other relevant information. Yeah. So, it allows storage, manipulation, and transmission of the data in digital form. So, here's something to kind of think about. Um, didn't we look up that didn't it talk about like, uh, well, I, there was something else, I guess the, the positives of both, right? Right. We went over that a little bit. We did. Well, I thought there was like something else. What do you want to know how, how they're different? Well, yeah. Cause in the storage process, they are big, huge differences, right? How you store it. In. Oh, oh, you, you said something about that. Actually, you said, um, well, so a, a, a piece of film, yeah, I'm like leaking everywhere. Oh my gosh, I had a malfunction and it's So working. yeah, you just introduced what you were going to say. So upon some research and then a kind of understanding, um, film, you know, I think that's in the advantages of both actually is where that's at. But we're, let's let you bring that up, bring up the advantages of both digital and. Okay. I think, um, I think it does talk about the storage componentry of it. Do you remember what well, that said? Uh, we, we or did you want to go over we, something else? We went over that a little bit. It, it's, okay, it's immediate feedback, cost effective on the long run, oh, I'm sorry. versatility and convenience. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. We did go over that part. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm In my head, I felt like there was more, but I guess there really was. We wasn't. can just talk about the differences a little bit. So storage, though, we, I, let's, so we'll bring that up. So film, historically, uh, that sounds no pun intended, uh, film historically has uh, a really long shelf life, and as long as it's not exposed to light, now, digital media 
it's being stored somewhere on some sort of drive, right? There's an actual drive. Yeah. It's got to be stored somewhere. And there, it has been, so far, digital storage of media has not been proven to be a good long-term solution because files get corrupted. The little drive, oh, it's like oh, a thumb oh, drive. Wait, Sometimes no. there's only so much life. If an electron... An electron passes through... Passes through the uh, actual digital aspect of whatever you have, the thumb drive or memory card, it will change that aspect of whatever it's hitting, the binary. Um, it will change that aspect, and you may lose it completely, or it may, may just get a little funky. It may get funky. So and it may it, look like AI trying to make hands. Right, right. Okay, so it the um, film does not do that. It is physical. It is a physical strip. Well, it's a physical capture. Yeah. Of it, a moment well, in time. Well, yeah. So it, it is the, like a, if an electron passes through it, since it's already developed. It's already processed. Nothing's going to happen to it. Yeah. That's the thing. That is the thing. Well, that's one thing. One thing. <laughs> I do I do want to show... I want to talk about skateboards a little bit, just really quickly. So, uh, yeah, well, let's transition. So, the reason why he got this camera with a big, giant zoom lens that he can't wait to try to figure out how to put on there, but we're going to be patient. Yeah. Um, it's because there is um, a little place down the street called the Boneyard and he wants to do some action photography there in black and white. So that's why we kind of said okay in the beginning you heard us talk about earlier why the AE1 we felt like was going to be the horse he was going to ride because of that reliability but we also since we have a toy and hobby shop here um, and we do repairs we were like oh okay there's some things that we need to carry. And son, mm -hmm. do you want to show them one? Sure. I'm going to move this. You want to show them? So this is a cruiser oh. board. Yeah, you take it out of the package. It's, so, uh, it's a mix between longboard, essentially, and a standard yeah. skateboard. Would yeah. you take that tires on it? So yeah. What are tires, are they? Uh, well, OK, these are longboard wheels, or cruiser wheels, since they're on cruiser. There is, there's, Pretty much longboard wheels in the same sense of the size and shape. Okay. Okay. So you you gotta. You want to, you need a knife, don't you? Again. Wait, Ashley, can you peel it off? I don't know where it went. That's okay. Yeah, yesterday I I couldn't believe I lost those axles and then I found them, of course, after I stopped looking. I'm on busing this. Do you have anything to say? So this is a, yeah, well, so we selected a, we handpicked some stuff for the store for skating uh, to kind of depart here a little bit. This is Yokoher. They're out of California. They're made in the United States. They use Canadian maple. Um, and they have some really cool designs. You can, they've been around since what, like 97? Yeah, since 97, I think they've been around. Um, and you know, they, they come out with some cool designs. They're just fun. They're not expensive and they're well made. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I think well, before you go spend 50, 60 bucks at the old, you know, dry white toast retail store, you could come, you know, go find your local favorite skate shop, you know, and see what you can find. And then they, you know, see what they recommend. Yeah, totally get their opinion, their professional opinion. If you trust them. Really, since it's your hobby, if you want to make it a hobby, it, it's it's based on your own preference because that, that is the enjoyment of the hobby is freedom. Right. It's part of the enjoyment. So, you know, and yeah, this speaking of Try It Tuesday, I, I, I've never skateboarded before. You've never skated? Well, I've been on skateboards. You know, I guess I never skate. Is that what it is? And we were talking about this, I think, when we were ordering this stuff. Oh, yeah. we. we I grew up around a bunch of people that skated. And, you know, it was shock, right? And poser this. And it was just all sorts of fun, like, little quips and stuff. 
they uh pretty cartoony, if you ask me. Alright, so what's this one? It's called what? The uh this is the Rockstar Kitty series. And this is Wink. He's yeah. winking. <laughs> and it says Yoka her on the skateboard, if you can see that. Um, so it's a neat little cruiser. And so this is their logo. So the cruiser is what kind of what it kind of looks like it's not. I guess it's basically like roughly the size of a standard skateboard. It's a it's a mini, but it's got big fat tires. It's on a it. mini longboard. That's all it is. That sounds like an oxymoron. I don't get it. You know, skaters probably get it. But yeah, I, I can understand. Well, I guess it probably the trucks are more flexible too, maybe. Um, they are. I just noticed the cutout on the board. So yeah, I just so, kind yeah of... it has this neat little cutout here. So you're going to be bending. You're going to be turning. Cruising. Cruising. You you don't want to get, you don't want your wheel to get caught up. Well, I think they call that a campus cruiser. Is that the term? It is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's campus cruiser. Maybe the size, too, it makes it a portable, more portable than a standard board. And we have more to go over if we want to bring those up. Oh, well, we do have a standard board. Yeah, show that off. This is a pretty cool design. I'm sure you can see now why we're, he's excited about doing the photography and skating. You know. What? They, it's they every, kind of go hand it's, in hand. It kind of goes hand in hand. You're right. I'm not doing anything too cool right now uh, for those of you that are watching for the CCO2. Uh, I'm just letting, these have oil filled shocks and I'm trying to make sure there's no bubbles. So, um, um, that's all. I'm when doing. a board is painted, when a skateboard is painted, it does not immediately have the grip tape on it. So, if you have a board that does not have grip tape on it, this is not important, but it has like a little highlight under the grip tape that is the original pink color of like the board oh okay and nobody skates from what i know really without grip tape i won't take those off yeah i'll leave those on but uh yeah here's the that's, design that's kind of neat it's pretty cool uh there's little casing on the wheels just because um whoever's gonna buy this I, I i'm sure we're not gonna take it off people like to see the progress of their wheels as they grow kind of see you know their mileage yeah, that's pretty much it. Keeping track of your progress. That's also if you're looking at the board and you see that your scratches. And the last one. Last but not least, I actually may try this. Longboarding? Yeah, I think it's kind of neat. And, well, here's the dangerous aspect of uh, longboarding is hill bombing. Why is that a dangerous aspect? Couldn't you hill bomb in this? That is more dangerous to bomb a hill bomb. So you're saying hill bombing is the thing you do? I have done it before, and I have almost gotten vigorously hurt, 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 hurt it. Hurt it? Yeah. Um, Sounds like you did get hurt. Well, here's the thing. If you're going to do anything too crazy with skateboarding, I do recommend a helmet. Just to keep your old noggin safe, of course. That's probably a good idea. Safety first. It's better to be safe than fine. Well, sometimes you may not be sorry. You may just be gone. Right. If you don't, if you don't do something right. Facts of reality. And this thing is so cool. It has a grip tape cutout, which some people find pretty cool. I saw that. It's kind of has a little more dimension to it, huh? It does. And here's the design. It has their alternative logo on there, and it just has like a color division. They have the same little cutouts on them. If your trucks kind of bend in that direction. Yeah. So they're they're pretty flexible. They work good for. Uh... And then we got these because they have a tail. Yeah, it's a kicktail. So it's bent at the end. That's why it's called a kicktail. And it allows you to pick up the board a little easier. I could give a demonstration of that, but... No. <laughs> we don't have any safety gear. 
And this is a tight spot. I mean, just kicking up the board, right? Like, just well, yeah. If it's on we're the ground. not gonna put it on the ground. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it over here. I don't think it looks neat, oh my veto. I kind of want to stare at it. Hope it doesn't fall over. Okay. What else do you want to talk about with photography? Anything? Uh. What else could we go over? Loading film. Yeah, so there is a process to load the film, right? I can actually show that process off since we don't know what's in here. Yeah, let's okay. do that. So, you have your roll of film. How are you going to load it? This could be a clip, by the way. Let me start over. You have your roll of film. How are you going to load it? Well, you look inside your camera. You uh, open it based off of this little thing right here. That is your uh, winder there. Put your film in. It has to be um, the little bump down, bump side down. I'll give you. So a it's like up. it's kind of. I guess that's. There's like. Oh yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So you drag it across. You get it caught on. First things first. You want to get it in the little winder there. Oh, you have to kind of feed it. Yeah, you have to feed it. It's it's a little complicated. Sort of. So let me go ahead and do that. It's not like your status. It's complicated. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give that a... This does need batteries to operate specifically. So a little bit of the drawback with the Canon A1. So you have your film loaded in. It should look like this. I dropped the lens cap. It should look like this. And you you uh you pull this back a couple times, you take a couple exposures, at least two, until this thing right here that says S actually shows number one that or yeah number one that would be your first image exposure, the first picture. Okay. So that's basically it. I hope that was a good demonstration. I really don't know. I'm sure it's fine, bud. That's kind of how I understand it. What else? What else I, did well, we research? That's just if, if, you have any, you know? if you have any questions I could answer. Oh, you're saying, oh, I have any questions? Yeah, I'll answer questions as we go. Well, what... What made you... Well, he has a trend here, but... Can, can I ask? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Right. I don't know how it's only got two viewers. But thank you for asking. Hey, we're just new. I don't know. We're new, and you know, we're not playing a video game at the moment. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I mean, we're mediocre at best. <laughs> I don't know about mediocre... But we're 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 pseudo professional probably, um, and you know thanks for throwing out a question. We we love questions. I want to know. So he has a trend that he likes to do. My son he okay. loves things that are not new. Oh, you're Can talking you about. Explain to me why. Okay, listen, listen. Can, let's let's start from the brass root of it, and then you go. Oh, okay, you know. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, the root of it is secondhand nostalgia. I have a longing for a time that I do not live in. So, I, I look at these old, old-fashioned things. I look, at, I look at stuff like this, like booklets that showcase these vintage effects and artifacts. I look at those and I go, God, these are so intricate. It has its own style and uniqueness. Why wouldn't you want that I don't in the palm of your hand? So, you, you take a look at it and you go, God, this thing is so cool. And it's got it's got some weight and stuff to it, which is kind of neat, you know. I think. Um, so it's the physical aspects of all of those vintage things. Like uh, I got a stereo setup at home. Right. I, I I love to have those at my hands, and so I, I listen to vinyl. I listen to CDs, cassettes. It's 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 all. I mean, those cassettes and CDs are okay. I actually kind of kind of dig cassette tapes for some reason. I think it's because I grew up. We were talking a little bit about this yesterday. This is on, a live. This is him. 
No. <laughs> yeah. We, we were talking a little bit. It's kind of funny looking. Yeah. Um, it's an example picture. Uh, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday on a mental break where how music can kind of, you can kind of hack your brain a little bit by listening to the right type of music. Uh, and I used to, I said, oh, I used to make mixed tapes by listening to the radio, you know, and click on it and stuff. He has a little, little bit of a fascination right now with vinyl too, which, think about it, you know, it's that little V groove piece there for stereo, one side's left, one side's right. And as a needle's passing through that, it's picking up the little peaks and valleys that are in there to translate out what you hear maybe yellow submarine by the beatles a point of that is is like photography that sound is a physical representation of a moment in time which to me is fascinating how you can capture like real moments in time and put them into a physical format like you know like 35 mil photography and, and even in black and white and i'm sorry there's like a weird glare this time of the day there's a car parked outside and sometimes it just like literally beams in here with its photons yeah <laughs> um so again 35 mil so let's recap some of the the things we talked about it's a chemical process from photons mm -hmm. from the sun that's mm -hmm. cosmic by the way don't forget that mm -hmm. Uh, you're capturing a moment in time. You have to understand some of that. You don't have to understand necessarily the chemical process, but you do got to understand that there are some nuances like the film speed or sensitivity. You have to understand the significance too. The, of, of that. Um, and then before you keep doing that, bud, why don't we just... I know he just wants to get this on here so bad. But don't for right now because you're missing a step. I, I see. And then um, I hate... You have to remember 14 years old and he's got a new toy and i'm just trying to keep him from breaking it before he gets to use it okay so if the ceo wants to come grab any of this stuff anytime soon and then say hey we'll look at this later and keep it in the old office that would be highly advisable um because you know how he's going to be but my, my main point is is the fascination like he said secondhand nostalgia that's kind of a real thing, I think, for some people, especially like maybe even his generation. It's I don't know if it's lost, but it's kind of a neat process to see sort of him capture some things that even some stuff before my time. Because I again, you know, the the analog photography, I wasn't into necessarily as a kid at all. Uh, I didn't even think any of it. In fact, I hated pictures. I hated to be in pictures. I still kind of do, but here I am looking at you. You have to learn how to adapt, but so 30, 30, 35 mil chemical process capturing photons. You have to understand what you're doing. You got to be a little more patient and going, Hey, outside it's this temperature, maybe not necessarily a big thing, but it could affect it. I got so much light. Um, and then you're trying to figure out like, Oh, okay. You know, what do I need to do now? Uh, well, take a picture. I hope it turns out okay. And if you don't know, you don't know until you process it. That's where I want to kind of parlay into the next topic. So here at Cosmic Toys and Hobbies, uh, it's on the old vest here or the the apron. It we we acquired some photo processing equipment, and it was really cool. I had been looking for a long time. I mean, a really long time. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, man, we're never going to be able to develop our own film. And he, he really wanted to develop his own, own film. Where we're at, we have a friend who, who also used to develop his film and how he used to do it when he, he was Christopher's age. I was sitting here thinking, how neat would that be? We shoot our own black and white photography and we process our own film. And then, you know, at the same time, people can be like, oh, hey, do you, can you shoot some action photography of me? And they get a physical product of it. So we acquired some pretty nice stuff for free. It's just the universe said, hey, here it is. And then we like boated down to good old Alvarado and said, here we are. And we're here to pick it up. And they were actually happy that we came and picked it up. Um, so, 
if you think about it, the, you know, sometimes if you're patient, you know, like in photography, you could capture a moment or you could capture some cool equipment if, if you're just patient. I hope we get it all figured out. Uh, he's going to have a lot of homework ahead. Uh, and he's still learning, but it, I think having that drive and that enthusiasm for a passion is, is really sometimes people who don't even know what it is so maybe he i hope he feels blessed in that perspective yeah um because a lot of times you know like even me i'm in my aged years here and and finding passions are, are difficult sometimes because you know cost and there's like a million different things out there because we love consuming new experiences so on try tuesday you know if you see any of your other stuff what well, was this is our third one on Try Tuesday, we tried a wooden model kit, right? That little car kit that yeah, was a wooden we, we, 3D uh, puzzle, which we need to finish. We do need to finish that. And then the CEO has arrived. She got the message. This, this he is gonna, He's going to do something to it. So here, take it real quick before he forces it on here. He's just too excited. I'm not trying to be a make him make a baby out of it. I'm just... Anyway. I want to know um, um i guess i guess i want to know a little bit more about some of the it, what are some of the different the different film types that are out there because we kind of talked a little bit about that earlier but i don't feel like we went too in depth with it a little bit so we'll give you a few little tips here uh on different film types because you probably want to know i want to Okay. So, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Um, so, various different types of film for photography offering a different characteristics and aesthetic qualities. Here are the most common types. Black and white. Black and white film captures images in shades of gray ranging from pure black and white. Uh, pure black to pure white. It is known for its classic timeless look, yeah, as well as its ability to emphasize texture and contrast. Different black and white films have varying levels of grain, sensitivity, and tonal range. Uh, number two is color negative film. Color negative film produces color images and is commonly used for everyday photography. It captures a scene with color information in three color layers, red, green, blue, RGB. Color negative film is known for its wide exposure uh, latitude and the ability to produce prints with rich, vibrant colors. <laughs> and then there's color reversal film, slide film. Color reversal film, also known as slide film or transparency film, creates uh, positive in images directly on the film. It offers vibrant, saturated colors, high contrast and sharpness. Slide film is used for project projection or to create transparencies. And then there's instant film and special specialty film. Uh, so in instant film was popularized by Polaroid. Oh yeah. Um, it allows. Well, it's still fun, you know. Yeah, it allows for immediate development and produces a physical print shortly after exposure. It is known for its unique nostalgic look, often characterized by vibrant colors and vintage aesthetic. So speaking of that. Do you remember, so, I, I mean, I remember this, but do you remember when you would take a 35 mil and then try to charge people to take their picture? Do you remember that? You've done that before. I have? Yeah. Are you talking about when I had my Polaroid? Yeah. I, Did, didn't I, you do that a couple times? No, I would take a Polaroid, not a 35 mil. Oh, sorry. 30, I, I misstated. I, I apologize. So, uh, he, a Polar, yeah, sorry. My, I get tongue tied. The Polaroid, yeah, so he took a Polaroid camera and then he, uh, yeah. I took its Polaroid camera to school. Yeah, and, and then he would... people for their pictures. That's and and they, they, they paid for it because it's this stupid vintage aesthetic thing. Well, it's an instant gratification, too. Yeah, so, um, and the film, specifically on Polaroids, they're not like 35 millimeter. They have their, um, it's magnetic, mostly. It is, uh... So if you bring a magnet up to a Polaroid, I'm pretty sure oh. you can move the picture around. Could you? Yeah. That would be weird. You can also break it really easily. So 
when you shake off the Polaroid, shake it like Polaroid, it 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 don't do it. It breaks it. Yeah. It he was wrong. The magnetic image coating. Do not shake it like a Polaroid. If you shake it like a Polaroid, you're going to be a goober. Uh, and then it. there's specialty films available for specific pur no, pur purposes uh, or artistic yeah, effects. Right. This includes infrared film for capturing infrared, high speed film for low light or fast action, and cross process film for experimental and creative color shifts, which is very interesting. Well, and that's kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, if you have a digital camera or your good old cell phone, I like it. Um, why'd you skip it? Oh, it was it was already. Oh, it was already done. Okay. Kind of like we were talking about earlier with you know taking the old digital you know selfie whatever you're on the old Insta books or the face balls, and you're like, hey, I need to take a picture of myself. Well, guess what? You're not really as good as you think you are, because that pixel is translating what it thinks you are supposed to look like and normally the camera is set up on your phone to make you look pretty it's kind of especially a, if you have a samsung yeah they, because they there's all these little filters and stuff that are on there and the pixel is going oh that's orange this is blue and that's red and then it goes one zero one zero one zero whatever that binary code is and it ends it's, up with a translation yeah, the, the and the image then, sensor it takes in some of the light converts it to binary right. puts a bunch of filters over it instead of keeping it authentic and real exactly pooey tired of this fake crap fake pictures anyway so grab you one of these <laughs> i'm going off on a tirade so it's a little bit to me disingenuous and i think we kind of talk about this in, in, as a family. We love just anything authentic, right? Real. It's like of stuff of something of substance. That's why we talk about hobbies all the time on the channel, uh, like how it's good for mental health. You know, maybe, maybe there. What are what are some mental health attributes for for doing photography? Photography in general yeah. it doesn't even have to even be thirty five mil. But just think about it, if you do 35 mil and you accomplish it, and you're like, I feel good because I'm a rock star. If you're like really good at it, right? Yeah, so I'm I'm sure there is something out there about mental health attributes. We love talking about mental health on the channel just because we want to make a positive impact on you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Right there. Okay, so. I'm talking that person right, right there. Okay, mental health attributes are not typically associated with film photography, but mental health usually refers to the states of one, one's mental well-being or psychological condition. When, however, when it comes to film photography, there are certain attributes or practices that can tr contribute to a positive, enjoyable experience, which is number one. Mindfulness and patience film photography often encourages more deliberate and thoughtful approach to capturing images. Taking time to compose shots, adjust settings, focus manually can foster a sense of mindfulness and appreciation for the process. Number two, curiosity and exploration film photography allows for experimental and ex uh, experimentation and exploration. Yeah, kind of like all those different types of papers you were talking about. Right. Or, or you can experiment with some from, from different things. And then and yeah. That, yeah, that would be um, specialty film. That's that's what that point you, you get your specialty film. You nice. You can do whatever. Um, trying different film stocks, techniques, and subjects can spark cre creativity, which we went over. And keep the process of exciting. Uh, uh, keeps it exciting. It keeps it engaging. exciting, yeah. Well... See, I'm reading a little too quick. I'm trying to get across these We points. talked about this yesterday. You got to slow down the speed up. All you, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Acceptance. He's tired of me being right Acceptance. all the time. Acceptance and imperfection. Acceptance. God, I got to slow down. This okay. is the, the next step is acceptance of imperfection. Oof. Film photographer Bob Ross. Fil film photography has a certain charm in its imperfections, such as film grain, light leaks, or unexpected outcomes. Embracing these unique characteristics can lead to a more relaxed and accepting mindset. Valuing the beauty in the unexpected, which is the essence of photography. That, you know, is beautiful. Clip it, Sarah. Or. 
If, if uh, Alex Alex has style twelve, has style 12 you're still around. You can clip it too. But but thank you for asking. I don't know why we only have two viewers. But I you know we're we're not playing the old Apex. We are kind of messing around here. We, we like to have fun. So you know, build something, have fun, try something different, talk about something different. Why not? Continue. Yeah. So reflectiveness and introspection shooting on film often requires waiting for the film to be developed and seeing results later the, and this delay provides an opportunity for reflection and introspection allowing you to analyze your work learn from it and grow as a photographer so oh i see so being introspective is therapeutic also applying to photography and there's community inter connection, which is important for any hobby engaging in other, other film photographers, joining photography clubs online or online communities or... Yeah, some fellowship, that would be yeah. cool. Um, or or um, sharing your work can foster a sense of camaraderie and Camaraderie, yeah. The shared passion for and support from fellow enthusiasts can contribute to positively your mental positive posit, contribute positive. positively to your mental well being. Nice. You know, there you go, another mental tip. Yeah. Um what else do you want to talk about? What do you want to know that's something that you haven't looked up yet? I'd put on an FD Canon. That's boring. Not that it's not boring. Okay. Um, I, I just um, really got to think here. Let's slow down for a second. Yeah, it's okay. So, something that um, I was thinking about that I really want to do, and I don't know where if I can do this. I'm sure I could on an analog perspective. I, if I had a fascination with photography, this is where it lays. Do you know what it is? No. An astro photography. I want to learn how to do astro photography. That's a little more complicated because if you sit, we'll pretend that this is my telescope. Well, here, I'm gonna put it over here. Let's pretend this is my telescope and it's looking up at, you know, Uranus. Mm -hmm. Well, Uranus is moving. Well, I gotta keep track of Uranus like the entire time as it's as you know it's moving across the sky here's uranus you know and it's moving and you're like oh wait i gotta point at it because the earth is rotating and you're like oh there it is and it's like tracking uranus yeah. so what i'm saying is is astrophotography is tracking uranus is a pain in the butt but what i want to do is learn how to do it because again you're capturing a photon from a moment in time way out there and i mean remember it's in the past, right? Well, let's think about this for a second. What if you get specialty in infrared film, specialty infrared film for astrophotography? So the problem with infrared, shooting an infrared in our atmospheres, that's why the old James Webb telescope is was built because they had to get, that's a whole other topic. So the reason why, you know, the James Webb telescope exists is way out on the other side of the moon where Tesla's cars is floating around. Um, it's because infrared, we have too much light pollution here and we can't see everything because of our atmosphere. Um, but there's also radio photography. Did you know that? No. Or radio astronomy where you're, cat, you're, you're looking at the radio waves and you're creating a picture with radio waves, which is kind of a whole other thing. You think I can go put these up really quick? Yeah, if you want to. Can we leave this leave that one here? Yeah, we're going to leave that one up. Is this the chosen one? It is. For you, me? You can talk about whatever you want. Well, so... If, well, yeah, but that's, that's that's for later. If you want to see an old dude crash on this later, maybe we'll show it on YouTube. I don't know. Um, but, so, I wanted, you know, in embarking on this um, photography day on Try It Tuesday, why 35 mil is so cool, or analog, um, I wanted to kind of understand more about it because I thought, well, what if you could adapt this? Well, I know you can. What if you could adapt it to like astronomy and doing astrophotography? And I know that's like a tough element 
to try to like kind of bottle up all at once but i don't know maybe maybe i can figure it out or something i don't know we'll see um but that's okay i think in due time um if you have a question what we always like to tell people is don't forget you can ask us questions on the channel uh, also too on our website you can ask us questions uh, what i mean by that is that uh, sorry i'm building something here at cosmic toys and hobbies Dot com. We have a little chat box in there that sometimes customers ask us like technical questions and stuff like, hey, will this speed controller work with that RC car or this motor or, you know, will this shock fit on this car? Uh, you know, ask us. We don't care. Um, it's not a big deal. Um, so, you know, some of you might be here. Was it desk view? Let's see if that works. Um, yeah. So what I'm doing here is... is if you're kind of lingering around, I'm working on this little build here. Uh, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit that way. There you go. So yeah, got a shock on now. Not too shocking that I've got a shock on. <laughs> Sorry, I know my dad jokes aren't that great today, except for the one about your butt. Yeah. Uranus. Hey, why don't you sh you want to shrink that a little bit so we can your head doesn't look like it's got yeah. a spaceship coming out of your ear? Uh -huh. Is there a smaller? Oh yeah, there's a smaller. Of course one. there's. Yeah. Okay. Of course there is. He's like that. Yeah, I got this under control, bro. All right. So what were you discussing? I was talking ears? about like a little bit like why I was fascinated with um um this because I I kind of wanted to. Maybe look at trying to do astrophotography or something later. Yeah, that. And and then if it's an analog, that would just be even more dope because uh, film. Yeah. Because of film. What is happening here? Big old oh fire truck just pulled up. Gosh. Big giant fire truck out front. I hope everybody's okay. Yeah. What is? Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> um. So yeah, yeah, the mental health attributes with film photography, that's not a normal connection people make. But it's something you should consider. Yeah, yeah, if, if you want to rewind a little bit, we talked about the a little bit. I was... I, I mentioned it because there might be somebody... Son, your hair is getting so tall, people can't see me no more. I'm, I'm playing. I know that he gets a mental break from doing this stuff, so why not, right? I'll be right back. He's needed up front. Okay, so, I mean, mindfulness and patience, curiosity and exploration, acceptance of imperfection, this is all regarding to film photography, reflectiveness and introspection, community and connection. I mean, those are all good mental aspects of, of film, which uh, is, they, they have a very unique way of uh, connecting to in that way, to mental health. Um, I'm gonna try to come up with a different topic we can discuss. Cause like, what is usually escape? Oh. What's going on? Just fire inspection today. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious. On what? Skateboard photography is a unique genre. Oh, yeah. Okay, so skateboard photography, which is basically my passion at the moment, my hobby, it is a dynamic and fast-paced world of skateboarding out there. Uh, to effectively capture skateboarding moments, considering consider these follow, following up. Uh, gosh, consider the, the, the following. Okay. Composition. Pay attention to the composition of your sh your shots. Experiment with different angles, perspectives, and framing techniques to highlight the skater and their tricks. Be mindful of the background and surroundings to create visually engaging images. Timing and action is important too. Skateboarding is all about movement. Um, so anticipate the skater's movement and be ready to capture the decisive movement. 
When they perform a trick or maneuver, timing is crucial to freeze the action and convey the energy and aesthetics to the zone of the skateboard. Hey, can you? Okay, can you go up front and the boxes and stuff that are up front, can you start pushing them out of the way just in case since there's an inspection happening now? There's not? Wait, what? Is... Then why did Pam tell us? Oh, Pam for tell. Okay, we don't have a fire inspection drill going on. <laughs> Well, that was cool. So somebody got delivered in a fire truck to pick up their big car. That's hilarious. That is honestly insane. Okay. Sorry. We almost had a literal fire drill here. Oh my goodness. Uh, one of the other ladies was out front. She said the driver rolled the window down on the fire truck and he said, Can we get an oil change while we wait? Nice. She's like, I don't think we have that much oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It, okay. It, it, some of you, again, you're probably watching this and it, for the first time. You never know. I don't know when you're watching this. This is but probably our craziest stream. <laughs> there's a lot that goes on here, okay? You know, we. So, anyway, sorry. Um, yeah, so, I mean, lightning. Light <laughs> lightning work? Lighting. Lighting plays a significant role. Um, in skate photography, seek out interesting natural lighting conditions. So if you have a little patch of shade over the skater, all the rest is lit up, and it's kind of like putting him in the spotlight, but inverting the spotlight because of the shadow? I don't know. That's that's my imagination. Made a mess. Seek out natural interesting, interesting lighting conditions, or experiment with off-camera flash to add drama and impact on your images. And pay attention to the direction, intensity, and quality of light to create dynamic, well exposed shots and also that's considering location and environment choose a skate spot and skate park visually interesting um because that you need elements that complement the skateboarding action consider the textures colors and lines in the environment to add depth and physical interest to your photographs and there's his watch <laughs> what your watch came on camera for a second this little weapon um, and yeah, so experiment with settings. Uh, while the type of equipment you use is flexible, a camera with a fast autofocus and burst mode and the ability to shoot low light conditions can be advantageous for, advantageous. <laughs> for capturing the quick movements Sorry, of skateboarding. So yeah, adjust your camera settings accordingly, considering fast shutter speed to freeze action and wider aperture to create shadow, shallow depth of field. Okay. And then there's a skate safety aspect. <laughs> Don't get whacked by a skateboard. So yeah, I mean, there's many more. We need to go over film versus digital a bit, little bit. Yeah. Do you want to go in more depth? Because okay, let's let's have our own. Do we want to have our own little topic? On this? Yeah. Okay. What what's your digital? Digital is okay. So right. yes, there's a place for digital photography. For sure. It is the flexibility in the camera. Right, the flexibility, the instantaneous uh, componentry of it, uh, the ability to get on the old baseballs and you know and and show your Insta books how everything works real fast. Like, oh look, here's my it's, gross. Well, it's, here, it's no, a little here, bit... it's it's. Think about it. It wasn't until digital photography and. If it wasn't for di digital photography, let me rephrase, you wouldn't know what the hell everybody was eating every day now, would you? I mean, I feel I mean, like all of a sudden, I well, no, about... it's it, people, some people care. Well, don't get me wrong. Right. I know there's a, a goober and, and for everything out there. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying kind of like what Fat Boy Slim said one time, he said, we encourage people, you know, to take a picture of the moment. But when the jam is on, bring it on and be there. Be in the moment. It's hard to be in the moment if you're always staring at something in your Don't face. Don't be a dull viewer. So to that point, you know, obviously if you're watching this and it might be on a digital device, uh, right. we hope that you just put us on in the background and then you listen to us pontificate on random crap and talk about, you know, taking pictures of Uranus. 
and then going, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. And then you're building something like we are at the same time. Literally, that's all we're trying to do is just kind of create like some ambi ambiance for you. Hobby flexibility. Hobby flexibility, right. Um, so to me, uh, digital photography is a little bit of kind of a misnomer when it comes to a real form of art. Because unless you're just a rock star at it and you're doing all your own manual tuning, and I know there are people out there that do that. Yeah, of course. But again, there's electronic componentry that's still translating that, so it makes it, to me, not as fun or real. So that's really the only reason why I'm and here like, so hard on this subject really, right now. Really, really, with digital photography, it's the impulsivity. If you're an impulsive person... That's good. Capturing impulsive moments... That's a good thing. That's a good thing uh, in most aspects. Yeah, because on the fly and having fun... You can and, also carry that over to film, though. You can. How would you carry it over to film? Give me some examples. Buy a million pictures. <laughs> that's one example. Oh, have an infinite supply of film. Right, right. You can you can have a, like a film extension that like gives you like a hundred roll, a okay. roll of a hundred exposures. Okay. So yeah, I guess there's that. There's also um, uh, what else is on your brain? We can just go ahead and look up how to be impulsive with film. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you can do that. Are you impulsive? I don't know. Yeah, so like, um, yeah, being impulsive with film photography can add an element of spontaneity and creativity to your process. Here are some tips. Uh, carry your camera everywhere. Keep your film with your camera with you at all times so you're always ready to capture well, and people are like well i'll just i'll just use my cell phone for that right but but by having your camera ready blah, 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 by having your camera ready and accessible you can seize the opportunities um and capture well that was the scenes. thing you, you know can... people carry their camera around, cameras around forever and then they didn't carry your old bag phone everywhere it's also important to embrace the unknown be cosmic Film photography inherits uh, and involves a level of uncertainty and surprise. Embrace this unpredictability by being open and unexpected to unexpected results. Um, yeah, kind of like what you were talking about. Yeah, happy accidents. Happy, kind of like what you were talking about earlier. How there's a um, man. I hope there's nuts in here. Uh, What's your point? What? Okay, I hope. Well, going back to your point you made earlier about how there are essentially happy accidents sometimes with photography that can provide a result that would otherwise never ever happen. Like stray light, like you said. Yeah, so, and I wanna go on, this impulsivity part of film is the most beautiful part about it. This is how you get those beautiful pictures, in my opinion, because that's that's kind of why I like skate photography. Um, having those happy ec accidents and embracing unpredictability and unexpected results allows yourself to explore different techniques and experimental exposures and compositions without worrying about imperfection that's embracing imperfection and shoot from the hip like literally shoot from the hip by holding your camera at waist level or without looking through the viewfinder this technique allows you to capture candid and spontaneous moments without interpreting the flow of the scene it may end up with unique and surprising compositions that's that's actually kind of cool. I never really thought about yeah, that. Yeah, trust your instincts. When a scene catches your attention, adjust your instincts and take the shot without overthinking. Follow your intuition and capture what resonates with you. Emotionally or visually, don't be afraid to take risks and break conventional rules. Which is good. I want to relate that to baseball. Follow the ball. Follow the ball. Follow the ball. With your eyes. Ball. With your eyes. Mm -hmm. Your intuition. Yeah. And so yeah, the camera here, man. embrace the limitations too because film has a limited exposures per row and each frame is precious. Rather than worrying about it, embrace the limitations and embrace your imperfections. Allow yourself to be more experimental and carefree with your compositions. This has a mental health aspect to it too. Don't overthink. 
every opportunity that you're wrong is an opportunity to create something new and unique. Okay. And so, so avoid analyzing every aspect at all time, or getting caught up in the technical details. Instead, rely on your instincts as it unfolds. Be more authentic and genuine in the moment. You can have a camera on you all the time and be in the moment. Okay, like shooting from the hip, like you said. Right, and experiment with different films. This could be red light film, or it could be, uh, what else is there? I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's color, black and white, and then you got your specialty. Specialty is probably the best for impulsivity. Or it's kind of expensive, so I don't know. And so, try different film stocks. I don't know. Including expired film stocks. If you have an expired film, yeah. it makes it look more cool. How? <laughs> well, think about it. It's all messed up. So it's you're saying it's psychedelic? It's psychedelic. Because well, it uses literal chemicals, crystals. Right. So it's it's gonna it's gonna morph it. It's gonna mess it up. You know, this, real quick, capturing photons. I can see why maybe the um, I think is it. What is the uh, what are what are the uh, native? Um, people of Australia, yeah, they believe that I think photography is like capturing their soul. Can you can you look that up? I think okay, what is it? I feel I feel like there's it, it, you know, think about it for a second, you know, that is a photon of yourself kind of being captured on film. So what's the what is it about? Uh look up um the native Australian what what are they called? I don't even remember. Aussies? No. They're Aborigines. Oh, oh, yeah, I think average. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, they, I believe, I remember reading somewhere that they don't, they don't like their picture taken. I think this is just an interesting footnote. Maybe there's some truth to this. I don't know. I'm ignorant in this. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking into it. Um. I just found it kind of fascinating because, you know, we know it's capturing. Um, hold on, hold on. Indigenous Australians. So it's true that some individual communities may have a cultural or personal reasons for being cautious or hesitant about being photographed. But in many indigenous cultures, there is a deep connection to land, ancestors, and spirituality, and the act of taking someone's photograph may be seen as intrusive or disrespectful to their cultural beliefs and practices. Additionally, some indigenous communities have led to negative experiences with exploitation, misrepresentation, or appropriation of their images in the past, which can contribute to the general wariness uh, towards being photographed. That, I, that makes sense. I can see that. You don't want to be so exploited. It's, it's, that, I think that's part of it. But yeah, yeah. Ca that thing about capturing your soul, I can see how somebody can misinterpret a photograph sure. in that uh, sort of cultural way. Of, uh, it's a very spiritual thing. And, you yeah, know, spiritual, yeah. I, I used to... Can we talk about this for a second? I used, I used to hate having my picture taken. Well, yeah. And why, and why, why do you think... That do you think that's a thing? Like, do you think other people like don't like their picture taken, or maybe they're photo shy? Or, yes, or, yes, yes, know? of course. Why? Why do you think? Why do you think that is? Because I used to have a very negative opinion of how I looked in photos and stuff. I, I just I hated it. I hated the way I looked, and I don't know if it's because like the imagery is flopped from like what you normally would see versus a mirror, maybe. Right. I don't know if that's how it is. I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know why I, I used to be that way. Maybe it's insecurity. Um, it's, yeah, I, uh, that, I that, that that's the root of it, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but why was I insecure, I guess? Or, or I wonder if other people were like that, you know? Like other people are insecure in that regard. If that even makes sense. You want me to look into that? Yeah, let's look it up. Why are why are people why do you think some people are insecure about having their picture taken? 
Okay. It, it's it's loosely related just because you know we're talking about taking pictures and sometimes people don't want their picture taken. So we'll figure it out. I don't know. It could be nothing. All right, so here are some examples. Uh, Self-image is one of them. People may have personal insecurities about their appearance or body image, which makes people self-conscious about being photographed. They worry how they might be perceived or judged. And then there's also vulnerability, because being photographed can make people feel vulnerable. Okay. As it captures a moment in time, can potentially expose them to uh, scrutiny or criticism. Oh yeah, scrutiny. Yeah. Well, I can see that. Like you know. Yeah. And having Dude, it shared can you without. Can see what Sally yeah. was doing? Yeah. Ugh. And trust, gossip. trust Some and gossip. control is important when it comes to be fo being photographed. And so you can feel insecure if you don't trust the photographer, or feel that the lack of control over how their image is being used or portrayed. So it's important if you're photographizing. If you're, you're, if you're photographing, make, if know, you're, know if your you're, audience. If you're taking a picture from somebody, um, yeah, know your audience. Consider their uh, sensitivity. Yeah, consider their feelings. Feelings. A little bit. Yeah. yeah, we'll ask them first. Consent. Yeah, because I, you know, I, I, he and I had talked about this before. Sometimes when he, he likes to go out in public and just take random you know pictures and stuff which right. is nothing wrong with that that's cool you know i mean but sometimes people are like no man get out of my face and you're like i'm sorry bro i ain't trying to you know make your day bad um you know just kind of know the room i guess is what we're saying right yeah yeah just a little bit some people want to keep their image private that's true their self-image or just them or you know again it may be like me first. i was just like Ugh, i don't like the way i look in pictures you know I, and i don't know if i had a direct reason other than just probably like a an uh, uh maybe a self-image like you said a self-image issue or I mean, something yeah we've been over a lot this stream well i just kind of wanted to talk about that for a minute because sometimes i don't think people respect that boundary you know uh where not everybody wants to be photographed for a various reasons, right? Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just, you know, respect them for it, right? He's looking through his little tote right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to find a little part, a little lock washer. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, because I want to put more parts on. So real quick, here is kind of where I'm at at the moment, for okay. those of you. So I got the shocks on. Squeezy, squeezy. <laughs> so I got the shocks on. Uh, I'm putting the bumper inserts in right now. I put the side rails on. Um, what else? It just looks adorable. I love it. And of course, we did a whole bunch of custom hardware to it so far. We got the hopped up motor system. We got a silky servo on there and blah, 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 blah. It's a whole lot of gobbledygook. Um, so yeah, I'm looking for a lock washer. Son, in closing, do you think there's anything else we haven't covered when it comes to why cosmic rays make 35 mil? So yeah, so yeah, cosmic. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Is it is it time to? Yeah, I, we're I, gonna wrap it up here a little bit. So um. I like the jams today. It is, yeah. Yeah. So, um... In conclusion, this is a cosmic topic we have here. Capturing exposed light rays that happen to go into your your camera. Through a lens, through a piece of gra glass. It, it is, uh, the... The photon going into your camera. Is it like this? 
hurt and stuff, so you can... Here, okay, I got it. Oh, I got it here. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try to get you. Right in there. And I'm gonna turn it up. Oh, there it is. So, film photography is a very interesting world. I hope we uh, captured the aspects of it here on stream. And we hope you have a cosmic and good, good hobby day. Yeah, stay positive, stay, stay groovy, stay, stay cosmic. cosmic. And try something new on Try It Tuesday. This has been Try It Tuesday, and it's been crazy. Adios.